And I think that's very important because um, fiction is what it is, fiction. Yes, yes. Fiction yes, is not real. Y yes. yes. Uh, uh, and it's like watching a movie. It is. You know, the, the most successful movies are probably the ones with the most incredible stories, the most unreal stories. Yes. Everybody wants to watch mm -hmm. a Marvel comic-based movie these yes. days. I mean, how real is a is an Iron Man or, 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 or an Incredible Hulk mm -hmm. or any of those characters. They are not real, but people really enjoy them. Mm -hmm. you know, and I think uh, while reading a book of fiction like this one, yes. like you just said, it's important to remember that. Um, so despite Abike being rich mm -hmm. and the Hawker being that poor, yes. both of them come from two different mm -hmm. sides of the world, you, know, um, you just kept telling yourself, I need to know how this thing ends. Yes. You know, I need to know how it ends, you know. I'm talking about how it ends then. Are you happy with the way the, the book ended? Um, no, not really. But once again, you remind yourself it's fiction because the way it ends, it's not realistic in a Nigerian society. The way our society is, is I'm not a feminist or anything, but the way it is, is that a young woman at that age, I don't want to give away too much about the book, but a young woman at that age coming into power she must have a very, 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 very strong personality and character. And she must have the backing of some other older, mature people because they will never let that happen. It doesn't matter how much your family has put into something. Mm -hmm. Yes. I, it sounds like I'm talking in code, but I don't want to give away too much. <laughs> now, does Chibundo Nuzo typify the modern day creative writer? Um, that you'll find in Nigeria, you know, these days. Um, people are talking about the quality of Nigerian books, the quality of Nigerian literature, you know, these days. Does Chibundo typify, you know, those writers that we all should be proud of and um, we all should be getting their books to read? She does. She absolutely does. I found, um because I like to read outdoors sometimes. So I found that as I was reading, I would raise my head up and exactly what she was illustrating in the book is what I am seeing in reality. She does that. She's very, very creative in, in bringing things to life, in you picturing things like the hawkers running on the road or the car slowing down and speeding up. Like, and you raise your head up and you're like, oh, that's just happening right in front of me. So it's like she puts, it's, it's life in the book. It's like the book is alive. It's because it's we are here in Lagos, it's alive around us. So if anyone abroad is reading it, they get a fair idea of, of our town, of our city. Do you think we underestimate the power of books like this in telling our stories, in selling our culture to the world out there? Um, I think what countries like America what they've done successfully yeah. is to sell their own stories to the world yeah. through movies and through their music and their books. You know, um, we are not doing too badly with music. Uh, maybe Nollywood is not doing too badly. It still has a long way to go. But when it comes to Nigerian literature, I'm wondering. I keep asking myself: um, Do we underestimate the power Nigerian literature can have in terms of selling our stories? Absolutely. Um, to the world. Absolutely. We underestimate it every day. Every, every time you walk past a book, a Nigerian book, most times you just think, this Nigerian author, like, let me spend my money at the cinema instead of buying, buying this book. But one thing with books is they I treasure. Now, when I buy a book, what I do is I write my name, I write where I was when I bought the book, and I write the date and the year. The reason I, I started doing this is because my grandfather, he's late now, he gave me a book and the book, he got it in 1978 and he wrote down like how he felt about the book. And this is what he does. Whenever we would go and see him, he would give each grandchild a book. Wow. Yes. And that book is a treasure because it's, he scribbled his thoughts about the book and that book was 1978. I wasn't born in 1978, mm -hmm. but the fact that I have that book, I have that story. And it is something that it's in my hands. I can pass it on to my children. They can pass it on to their children. Books capture a lot. They, can, they don't capture, yes, movies tell you the story, but they don't capture as much as a book would. A book would illustrate every single thing. And it gives you that opportunity to imagine how 
things would have been in a certain time to tell you the story of how somebody felt in a certain time. Yes, the movies have their dialogues and all that, but they don't tell you enough. They don't tell you enough. That's why you see movie um, people who read the books and then go and see the movies. They always complain because the movie never does it justice. Mm -hmm. So books play a major role in documenting our stories. Books play a major role in telling our stories and sharing our stories. This is one of the easiest ways. I mean, I can buy five copies of this and then give it to my friends abroad and they would appreciate it because I've given them, aside from what I've described, if they haven't come to Lagos, it's giving them an insight into my city. What do you think about the title, The Spider King's Daughter? Is that, is that appropriate for what you read in there? Yes, it is. Absolutely. She got the title spot on, correctly. Oh, ah, she did? She did. I didn't think so. <laughs> <laughs> really? We have, like, at first, before you read the book, you're thinking, mm, and then while you're reading the book, you're like, why are you calling this lovely girl <laughs> Spider, Spider King's, King's, King's daughter? You're, you're first questioning her. But as you get to know Abike Johnson's father, Lumide Johnson, better, then you know why he is the Spider King. Mm. As you get to know the character better, you know the reason for that title. So you like the title? I like the title. Okay. Yeah. Now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how do you rate the Spider King's daughter? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7? I'd give it a 7. Okay, so you scored the Spider King's daughter a 7. Yeah. Now, why didn't you score it a 5? And why not a 9? I can't score it a five because it's a brilliant book. I can't score it a nine. That's such a hard question. <laughs> Chibundu, if, if, if you watch this, I like your book. I can't score it a nine because it it didn't get to a nine for me. It didn't get to a nine for me. But one thing about her book, it might not be a history lesson, but it is very educative. Now, since reading this book, when I see a hawk on the road, I think about where is he coming from? What's his story? What made him end up on the street? And then also, I'm, very, I'm much more polite to them. I, I say, oh, good afternoon. Please give me Twingong. And then I say, thank you after. I'm much more, because the book reminds you that everyone has a story. There's a reason why they are there.